Professor Clements with you as we uh, consider more about magnetism and how magnetic effects can cause an induced EMF and an induced current. Um, we'll be leading up to generators, electrical generators, as we go through this material. And again, I'm using PowerPoints from OpenStaxCollege.org, the physics course. Um, one example of uh, electrical generators would be wind-powered generators. Here is a wind farm that happens to be in Spain, um, but the wind generator is on the poles here to get up to where the air is moving a little more rapidly, more kinetic energy in the air. The kinetic energy of the air, the wind, is transferred to kinetic energy of the propellers, and inside here there's kinetic energy in a moving loop of wire in the presence of a magnetic field. We're going to find out how that uh, can create electrical current. Another example of this turbine type uh, arrangement of rotating a coil of wire in a magnetic field is the uh, hydroelectric uh, turbines. So we take kinetic energy of water and uh, they of course are going to spin this propeller and uh, turn the uh, moving coil, make the coil of wire move in the presence of a magnetic field and induce a current. So let's talk about Faraday's experiment in the early 1800s. Michael Faraday, a self-taught uh, physicist, uh, was experimenting with electricity and magnetism. And he, would, he wanted to close the switch here and see if he could get a current in this separate circuit on the right by closing the switch. The wire around this iron core, this iron ring, is insulated wire. It's not bare wire. So the wire is not in direct electrical contact with the iron ring. And same thing on this second side. The loops of wire here, we have insulator around the copper. Um, what Faraday found is only at the instant when the switch closed, or the instant when the switch opened, would there be a non-zero reading on the galvanometer here, the current meter. If the switch is closed, left that way for a long time, there is no reading on the meter. We only observe induced EMF, induced current, when there's a change taking place. When we close the switch and establish a current here, or when we open the switch and uh, bring the current back down to zero, then for a brief time there is a current in this second circuit. So, to discuss that and build up a concept of how this operates, we need the concept of magnetic flux. So we calculate magnetic flux by multiplying the value of the magnetic field in Teslas, and this magnetic field needs to be uniform, needs to be constant over the whole area. We multiply by the area. If it's a circle, we use pi r squared. If it's a rectangle, use length times width. Um, and we also include a factor of the cosine of theta. Theta is the angle between the magnetic field vector and an area vector. The area vector, it turns out, is perpendicular, and I'm having a hard time drawing a straight line, uh, but the area vector is perpendicular to the surface, and this area is set up such that the uh, magnetic field lines and the area vector are parallel to each other. Um, when the magnetic field is perpendicular to the area, the angle is zero. It's the way the angle is defined. You have to think of another vector here perpendicular to the area and look at the angle between that area vector and the magnetic field vector. I'll give this one more try. Uh, the area vector comes straight up and again I should not have any curve on that red line. It should be straight. It's designed to be parallel to the magnetic field vector. The angle would be zero. Cosine of zero is a one. So we get our best flux when the angle is zero, when the magnetic field is directly passing through the area. And you can see how we, could we change the flux. We could increase or decrease B. We could have a bigger area or smaller area where a loop of wire encloses. Or we could change the angle if we tilt that gray uh, circle. Um, the magnetic field will not pass directly through the area of BH slanted, and that would be a change of theta. So we'll encounter that in this chapter. Well, let's move on to our next slide here. 
Here's a situation, this yellow loop of wire. Magnetic field is passing through it, but the magnetic field is getting weaker over time. Every second, the magnetic field is getting weaker. That's a change of flux. And Faraday found that there will be an induced current in a loop of wire when the flux is changing. You could also say there's an induced EMF, an induced voltage in this circuit when the flux is changing, the magnetic flux is changing. Then there's Lenz's law that gives us the direction of the induced current. Lenz's law says that the direction of the induced current will be such to oppose the change that's taking place. Okay, magnetic field, the original magnetic field is getting weaker. That means the flux is getting weaker. Lenz's law says the induced current will be such to oppose the flux getting weaker. And the book has this uh, set of green magnetic field lines. Those are from the induced current. If you put your right thumb in line with the wire in the direction of the red arrow and wrap your fingers around the wire, you'll find that your fingers point up at the area of the loop. And indeed, the magnetic field created by the induced current cooperates with this blue magnetic field making, trying to make the flux uh, remain constant. It doesn't win, but it does uh, modify the flux, making the decrease less rapid. So the direction of the induced current will be such to oppose the change that's taking place. We'll see some more examples of this. Here's a magnet, magnetic field lines leaving the North Pole. The magnet, uh, of course, has a strong magnetic field near the pole a weaker magnetic field spread out field lines far from the pole and in this situation we're moving the North Pole closer to the magnet. Is the flux increasing or decreasing? Flux is increasing. The stronger magnetic field is now getting to the plane of the area and that's where we calculate the flux right at the area so we multiply the magnetic field here by the area. It's getting stronger. Flux is increasing. What will be the direction of the induced current? Well, we need an induced uh, current that will create a magnetic field that is pointed down through this loop. The induced current has to give us a magnetic field that's opposing the original magnetic field. The flux is increasing. Lenz's law says the direction of the induced current will be such to oppose that change that's taking place. Opposed increased flux. We need to decrease the flux by creating a magnetic field, second magnetic field, that points down through the area. And you can verify with your right hand. If you put the thumb of your right hand off to the left on the front part of the loop here, your fingers will, fingers will point down in the plane of the area of the loop. Let's try another one. Same magnet, but now moving away from the loop. Now the magnetic field is getting weaker at the plane of the loop. The flux is decreasing. The flux is decreasing. So what do we need for the magnetic field from the induced current? Our flux is decreasing. We need a magnetic field from the induced current that adds to the original magnetic field from the magnet. We need an upward, I don't have a great error on that, we need an upward magnetic field. Um, so Lenz's law again tells us if the flux is decreasing, the induced current will have a magnetic field that is uh, going to try to increase the flux. That means we need a magnetic field in the same direction. And again, use your right hand, you'll find that the induced current going off to the right in front of the, in the front part of the loop here, will, if you wrap your fingers around, will have a magnetic field at the plane of the area that is up cooperating with the magnetic field from the magnet. Then a little bit more on the flux of so the diagram here. Again, magnetic flux, magnetic field times the area the magnetic field passes through, cosine of theta. Here we have a theta that's not 90 and not zero, but some intermediate angle. The theta is measured between the magnetic field line and a line that's perpendicular to the surface, to the area. And we can change flux again by changing B, or changing the area, or changing theta. So here's an example of electric generator. The magnetic field, north pole to south pole, that's a constant. The area of the loop, 
that's a constant. But we're turning the loop, we're putting in mechanical energy here, and that is going to change theta continuously. The magnetic field passing through the plane of this loop, the value of theta is going to be constantly changing. The flux then is constantly changing. There will be an induced current, and we can hook up to a meter and measure that induced current. And this uh, electrical generator, and this is a very common uh, simple diagram of an electrical generator, a rotating loop of wire in the presence of a magnetic field. We're converting mechanical energy into electrical energy. We have a generator. <coughs> Here's another use of this induced current. So here's a child who uh, cannot hear naturally. Here is a sound receiver, and electronics in here create electrical signals that run up to a coil of wire. Uh, and this coil of wire, with the variable current created by the equipment here, there'll be a variable magnetic field. That magnetic field can pass through bone to a coil that's been implanted inside the head and there are wires from that coil to the uh, the nerves for the ear. So a cochlear implant um, used successfully for many years. Sound is received here. A signal goes up to this coil. Variable current. We know that variable current will create variable magnetic field. The coil inside the head receives that variable magnetic field and creates a variable current that goes to the nerves with some uh, training, some therapy, uh, the person who has this implant can now hear and uh, you know, enjoy that form of, uh, of sensory action. Here's another example of induced EMF, induced current. We have two conducting rails here, a resistor at this end, on the left end, and we have a conducting rod. These are not insulated, so there's a complete circuit and mechanically we're forcing this rod off to the left. We're giving it some velocity off to the left. Is the flux increasing or decreasing? The flux is decreasing. Flux is magnetic field times area times cosine of theta. And now our area inside here gets smaller as the rod moves to the left. So there's going to be decreasing flux. What will the direction of the current be? Well, what we need, we need magnetic field from the induced current in red here to line up with, to aid the original magnetic field. The flux is decreasing because this area is decreasing. We need the second magnetic field from the induced current to try to help stabilize this decrease of flux. And the current then direction, if you put your thumb up the rod here, lined up and up on the paper with the rod in the direction of my arrow and wrap your fingers around you'll find that the magnetic field does come out of the area in the proper direction. You should also reverse the current and try your right hand and see what happens. If the current is coming down the rod here your thumb would be pointed down as you wrap your fingers around they go into the paper that would be uh, opposing the original magnetic field. That would make the flux decrease faster. Lenz's law says the direction of the induced current has to oppose the change that's taking place. Flux is decreasing. We need an induced magnetic field that's, that helps uh, give us more flux. And that's created by a current that goes uh, vertically up on this rod. And now eddy currents. Eddy currents. We have a bar magnet here, a pendulum, with a uh, uh, aluminum or metal plate, as this passes into the uh, field of the bar of the horseshoe magnet, the area that's experiencing magnetic field increases. So the flux is going to increase, and it turns out this will have a breaking action. Um, Lenz's law will create an induced current here that will create its own magnetic field to oppose the change of flux. There's change coming because the speed of the plate going through here is such to cause a change in the flux, more area getting involved. The magnetic braking, due to the eddy currents generated here, the induced current uh, in this metal is called an eddy current, 
that the induced current will have a direction such that its magnetic field slows down the object coming in. If we take the same metal but cut strips out of it, it turns out the resistance is much higher. We can't establish a big current and consequently there will not be much magnetic braking action. It'll swing on through. Or if, uh, if we have a piece of wood and pass it through, there's no induced current set up in a piece of wood, so we don't have any uh, magnetic braking action. Um, more detailed explanation of what's happening here as the conductor enters the region where there's magnetic field, an induced current is set up. The force on the plate then opposes the velocity. It's a braking type action that uh, slows us down as we uh, try to go into the region where there's magnetic field. But again, it's a Lenz's law situation. An induced current is set up to oppose the change that's taking place. If we cut strips in the metal, again, the current can't be as large and there's not as much of a uh, repelling force, so we don't have as much braking action. This has some practical uses. Um, you can uh, ride a roller coaster at the end of the ride. Um, the motion can be stopped with this induced current uh, acting with the uh, interaction with the magnets that are uh, right beside the cars. Um, another example of uh, this magnetic effect with coils of wire would be a metal detector. If there's a piece of metal near this coil, it will change the magnetic field concentrated inside the coil and the electronics uh, connected to the coil can sense that and give a signal that indicates there's some uh, metal underneath this coil. Because of the interaction of magnetic field with metal, uh, metal detectors can detect their presence. Again we have a, a situation here of a, a, a generator it asks you what type of current do you think is created by this generator? Alternating current or direct current? Alternating current or direct current? And you should answer alternating current. As the uh, uh, coil turns here, the flux is either decreasing or increasing, and that will cause a change in the direction of the induced current. A little bit more detail on that that we're not going to go into, uh, but we will get alternating current from that uh, generator. If we have a gap in the uh, connecting rings to the coil here, then at the proper time these brushes can contact the other half of the circuit and we can get direct current. It's not constant voltage, but the electrons are always moving in the same direction. If we uh, have a gap in the connection to the, the loop of wire, the two sides of the loop of wire, and these brushes go across the gap at the proper time as the current in here reverses every half cycle and we can get the uh, direct current. Another view of a generator, uh, steam turbine generator, the steam impacts on these blades and we get a turning loop of wire in a, uh, uh, in a region where there's magnetic field and we get that uh, electrical generation. That's where this video stops. This is sections uh, one through five of chapter 23 in the OpenStax physics book.